So I'm gonna make the running gait analysis very simple to do because I have a feeling that a lot of people overcomplicate it. And people do overcomplicate it. And I think it's because there's so much noise that gets thrown around and that if we just bring it down to a couple basics, that'll be sufficient enough for you to not just understand, but also implement the things that you would have analyzed or seen. So before we do get into um, how to analyze the running gait, we have to understand certain concepts or terms. So very briefly, we're gonna go over them all, and there are a lot more, um, but we're gonna start with these. So when we look at running gait analysis, there are certain checkpoints that we have to go through. Number one, and most people say it is the most important, is cadence. So what is cadence? Cadence is essentially the amount of steps that you take um, within a minute. Now, when most people have running issues, most of the time is because the cadence is not up to par. Your cadence should be around about 170 to 190 um, steps per minute. And so I'm gonna write that down. 170 to 190 steps per minute. Now, 180 seems to be the sweet spot um, in terms of feeling um, great while running. Now, what happens is this. Most people who have issues running usually run at a low cadence. They usually run at about 160, 165 steps per minute. And so we have to be able to monitor that. Um, and there's a very simple way of monitoring that is you literally take out your timer and you time the amount of steps in a minute. So that's the first one. The second, second one is your step length, which is if you take a step with the right leg, the, the length from the one step going to the other step on the same side is equivalent to your step length. Now, why is this important? If your step length is too, um, too much, meaning that you're overstriding in terms of your step length, most people usually have too much of a step length, the overstride, um, and that is equally terrible for the body because that puts undue stress on the body, on the system. So you don't want to overstride. What you do want is you want to make sure that your when you do land, bringing the leg um, onto the ground, you want to make sure that your foot lands directly below the center of mass, which is your pelvis region, specifically L4. L3 region. So you want to make sure that your your leg lands directly underneath your center of mass when you're running. So if you overstride, if you have too much of a long step length, it's going to cause your leg to go forward um, ahead of your center of mass, which then causes this undue stress on the body. Next is contact time, which is the amount of time that you are in contact to the ground. Now, most people who have issues with running usually have an increased contact time, meaning that they are in, in contact to the ground for um, a long period of time. What happens is this, there's this increase in stress on the joints when there's an increase in contact time. The joints stiffen more, and as a result, you develop these aches and pains. So you will want to limit the amount of contact time. Then the next is the flight time. So if it's contact time, which is contact on the ground, flight time is the opposite. That is the amount of air time that you have, the the amount of time that you're in the air. Flight time is also indicative of the amount of bounce that you have in the air. Now we want to eliminate the amount of flight time, which is um, you in the air in this vertical 
um, action. We don't want you to run like this. We want you to run like this. So not as much flight time in the air because if you are running up and down, the amount of energy that is required for you to do this is so much more, which means you are less efficient, where you actually want to run with the head bobbing up and down less. And so you'll see all of the great runners in the world, they don't run like this. They're almost quite stable through their head as they run. And so you want to eliminate this amount of action. And then lastly, the pelvis height. Um, and this is also very similar um, to flight time in that you don't want your pelvis to be moving up and down um, while you're running. You want it to be relatively stable as you're running. So the next checkpoint that we're going to have a look at is pelvic obliquity. So essentially that is, does your thigh, your, sh um, your legs cross midline when you run? If that's the case, that's very much indicative of you have hip instability. So if you notice someone running and you take a, um, a video from the front angle, the front of them, um, and you notice that the leg, as the leg comes over, it f shifts over to the side or past the midline rather, then they have some form of instability within the pelvis. So that's something to pick up. The next thing is pelvic tilt. Essentially that is, is the pelvis rotated forward with what we call an anterior orientation or is it tilted posteriorly, what we call posterior orientation? Most people that overstride usually go into this anterior um, orientation which causes um, there to be an increase in lordosis or lower back curvature and that then, then facilitates this poor um, efficiency in terms of running. Then. You have your pelvic rotation. So pelvic rotation is essentially what happens to the pelvis as you run. Does the pelvis tip as you run? Now, when most people run, if there is pelvic instability, you'll notice that if I take a step forward with my left leg and, and I'm, my right leg is being stabilized, my pelvis will essentially dip towards the stabilizing leg, which means that there's a lack of stability on that side and again that's indicative of some form of instability the next one is knee angle now knee angle is essentially when you are landing what happens to the knee joint there should be a bend in the knee there should be a soft knee as you land most people who overextend have this relatively straightened um, knee and that causes uh, incredible amounts of tension being generated within the body and so you don't want to have um, a, quite a stiff knee you want to have a gentle soft knee 40 to 60 degree, degree bend of the knee is what um, is usually re recommended however more so it's important to have a gentle knee bend and then the last one is ankle flexion now when most people run they usually run heel toe and that's because of our poor or too comfortable of, our, of running shoes when we run we generally run heel toe because of this um, the softening of the heel however if you take your shoes off naturally you will not run heel toe it'll be very painful i can guarantee you that and um, and more so you'll run um, more midfoot which is the way that we should run so ankle flexion essentially means that as you're landing your foot should be slightly flexed in order to make contact with that midfoot and not dorsiflexed. Because if there's in dorsiflexion, it means that your biomechanics is completely out. So, how do we resolve all of these points? There's a, there are a lot of points to look at, but the solution is quite simple. And the solution is, is essentially this. I want you to increase your cadence. You see, if you're running less than 180, um, roughly, and um, and you have all of and you have this insufficiency in running, you have back pain, knee pain, foot pain while running. 
I definitely want you to start to increase your cadence. What that does, it will start to resolve a lot of these issues that we already have. So, um, and what's quite important is you want to increase your cadence by only five to 10%, nothing more. Because the minute you increase it too much, the body actually starts to break down. And so we, we only want this um, adaptive load, so five to 10% increase in cadence. So very simply put, increase your cadence and all of these will be rectified. However, you wanna make sure that you do this over an eight period cycle, meaning that you should be able to practice this run eight times, because eight seems to be the number that the body starts to adapt. So take it easy, be gentle on the body, and um, it will take time. However, if you improve this one simple trick, which is increasing your cadence, you'll be pleasantly surprised how better the body feels.